Okay, so um, finally getting around to doing the review on the Eosheen trash can. And uh, yeah, this one's been reviewed already by a number of big reviewers. So there's not really a whole lot new that I can tell you. I, obviously, I'm going to go over the specs and everything really quick, uh, as I normally do. But, uh, you know, I'm going to kind of give you the, the good news and bad news thing here right off the bat. So the bad news, I'll give you the bad news first. And there's really only two things that are, in my opinion, kind of, well... Well, two things, well, kind of bad, but not really terrible. First off, the props are kind of loose. They will fly off in a crash, and um, you will lose them. Um, I, one of them did fall off on me, but I, I did find it. And all I have to do is, uh, to keep them on here, is I did the dental floss trick here, where I stuck a little piece of dental floss between the shaft and the prop hole. That gives it a little bit more friction, and that will hold on the props. So I'd recommend that you do that before you go and fly it. The props do come off pretty easily. You just have to twist and they'll pop right off. Um, yeah, the that's probably the one thing about the, the this particular, I don't know, whatever mold they're using is where the motor shaft is a little bit thinner, perhaps. So that's one thing that they, they need to fix, I think. Oh, and the other way that you can uh, also uh, fix that problem is putting a small drop of CA in the prop hole and then mounting it, and of course, letting the CA dry. That will also um, keep, it should help keep the prop on. Uh, the second thing that I was a little bit, uh, well, worried about was the camera here. Now, they're using a better camera than on what's on the Mobile 7. This is the Cadex EOS 2, but they're using the 16.9 version of the camera. So it has a pretty wide field of view horizontally, but a pretty narrow field of view vertically. You may not like that. Um, you obviously can tilt up the camera quite a bit, so you're not going to see all the ducks in view, and you can get plenty of, of uh, tilt forward here to, to get a lot of speed. Um, but yeah, that's one thing I wish that they would switch it to the 4.3 version of the camera. I believe it's also a PAL camera, not NTSC. So that's something that it might be an issue with your goggles, but mainly the 16.9 is going to bother people that, that use the, the 4.3 goggles. Uh, it's going to be distorted, kind of, um, things are going to be kind of distorted, I think, on the horizontal axis, I believe. I don't, I actually have the Dominator V3, so it didn't bother me as much, so I don't have, like, any of the, the Fat Sharks have the 4.3 aspect ratio screen so I couldn't really tell you what that looks like only just based on whether other people have complained about so that might bother you um, of course you could just buy the EOS 2 4.3 version and swap it up and then of course that's like another 10 bucks so why would you want to do that and it's like you know this is a hundred dollars to ten percent of the price of the thing I, I recommend that they just switch that to the 4.3 version and then they need to do something about this mount for the camera because there's way too much vibration. So the the, the camera mount has three, or this, this canopy has three points that mount, uh, mount to the frame. There's one here, one here, and then one in the back. And of course here in the front, because of the adjustable camera angle, there is nothing that's connected to the front here. So this um, front piece vibrates. And I'll show you a little bit of some clips here flying around uh, my one of my initial fl flights to see lots of jello. And then I added this small piece of black foam right there. You can hardly see that. Let's see. It's right there. And I shoved that under the camera. I mean, it's in there pretty tight. Like I can't I can't pull it out or anything. But the, even that did not seem to get rid of the vibrations as much as I was hoping it would do. And beyond that, I'm not sure what else uh, you could add there to prevent the jello, uh, because it is a CMOS camera, you're going to get a lot of jello, and the, because the thing vibrates on certain uh, points in the throttle. For me, it was more on the lower end of the throttle, and mid throttle, it was a little bit less. Of course, it's going to vary uh, depending upon uh, how you fly and stuff like that. Oh, and then the last thing that I wish that they would have included was this little 3D printed part that I made. And I'll include the Thingiverse link in the description. Basically, this helps hold the batteries in place. Now, they do include some foam uh, that they just stick inside there. That was, will, will help hold the batteries in place. But it, it, I didn't I, I didn't really feel that it was secure. I would When I would try and throw the batteries, they would, they, would, they would fall out when I did this. And, of course, in a crash, they would just get ejected. Uh, so I made this little 3D printer part. It's kind of like the one that was used on the Mobula 7. So even if you push forward on this, you know, it, it, it this part here is going to add a little bit more resistance. So this this part here actually is holding the battery. It's not actually these here. So if you want to download that 3D printer part, the link will be in the description. And you can just print that out and 
stick that to hold the two batteries in place that will prevent the batteries from ejecting in crashes. And that's about it. Everything else is uh, pretty good. Um, in terms of like how this compares to the Mobula 7, on paper, like the, all the specs are better. So you have uh, here, you have an O, 0803 motor at 15,000 kV, whereas the Mobula 7 has an 0802 motor at 16,000 kV. So a little bit higher kV on the Mobula 7. Uh, top end speed seems pretty similar. This motor has a little bit better low end grunt because of the taller stator. Um, just overall, I think this motor is just a tiny bit better. It's not like it's not going to blow your socks off like, oh, it's twice as fast as the Mobile 7. If you hear that from somebody that they're totally lying to your face because that's not true. It's like maybe five or 10 percent faster. Honestly, it's hard to really tell the difference. Obviously, you need some sort of speed gun or radar gun, something like that. Um, I might think about doing something like that. If you have an interest in a speed gun test between this and the Mobile 7, leave me some comments below and maybe uh, some suggestions on speed guns that might be reasonably cheap to get that are accurate for and can actually measure these little things because these things are tiny so a lot of radar guns aren't going to pick this up anyway so interested to see if you have any suggestions down below on that in terms of the overall speed i thought they were fairly comparable you know the, the mobile 7 has a little bit weaker motor but it's also lighter and i'll show you the weight differences as well this is heavier because it's got um, bigger motors and a uh, better camera setup here with a separate video transmitter. So obviously, I've already talked about the camera. It's got a separate video transmitter board. And it's right there. It's like a triangle. So it's a triangle shape like this. And it has a little whip antenna here that's on a micro FL connector. So you could possibly switch that out for a cloverleaf if you wanted to. And it, as you can see here, it does move. They didn't secure that down with any sort of like liquid tape in there or anything like that, so it's possible that this could get snagged on something, although pretty unlikely. But just letting you know that that is something that could happen. But, uh, yeah, the board there is power switchable 25 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts with smart audio. And that's another benefit of this one over the Mobula 7, which is only 25 milliwatts. This will do up to um, 200 milliwatts, which is also pretty nice. And, of course, the difference in the frame. This is a much better designed frame. Uh, it's going to hold up much better in crashes. Of course, nothing's indestructible. I've already seen photos of this frame destroyed. Uh, if you hit something hard enough, fast enough, you will break this one too. So don't think that this is that much better because, oh, it's indestructible. It's not indestructible. It's just better designed. You can see these curves here, more, you know, a bit better bracing there. You have, you know, they have these little holes here for basically weight savings. Um, but the material is pretty solid. Um, it's not super rigid, you can see it flexes, so it will give in a crash. Uh, if you hit something hard enough, you, you can see there it will flex and then it will hit the prop. So sometimes you could break a prop that way, or in my, in my case the prop got flung off. But um, yeah, and we had a few minor crashes, there's some just scuff marks there. Um, and not a big deal really. Uh, I don't expect this to last forever. If you crash this enough, eventually stress marks will, will develop and then at some point it's going to break. So. Uh, if your expectation is that this is completely indestructible, I would say no, but it's definitely stronger than the current, or at least the Mobula 7 frame that I have. I don't even have the version 2 yet, although I've heard that the version 3 looks just like this one, so, you know, we have the Chinese companies cloning their frames off each other right now, so whatever. I mean, the frame is a frame, you can, always, you know, if it, if it if push comes to sub, you can, you can spend $3, get another frame, and just swap the parts over, it takes like 10 minutes, it's not that big of a deal. I, it's not a deal breaker for me that the, that a frame is weak. So, um, yeah, if you if if you if you're in the camp where if it's a bad frame, it's not worth the buying, then I disagree with you on that one. In any event, uh, there's a, a nice little LED here in the back, and I actually want to show you they actually that programmed in already. And of course, we've got the 2S setup here, so we just have to plug in the two batteries separately. They do include the jumper to do the 1S setup, but I wouldn't recommend flying this on 1S. It's uh, heavier, and uh, yeah, just uh, even on a 451, I don't think it's going to be that that good. Even though, even though you can fly it indoors, it'll be slower. But you, I think having the 2S power indoors is actually better. Just reduce your camera angle would be the way to go. And here we go. Here's the LEDs. So these have the uh, Larson scanner thing going on here in the back. These are obviously smaller LEDs than you would typically see, so they probably take up less power. But you got five LEDs in the back with that nice little 
trash can, a little symbol there, pretty nice. I thought that was a nice touch. Now this is kind of, I think it's just glued into the frame here. So eventually as you crash a lot and this thing fluxes, that will probably, the glue will probably break and this will probably fly out. Um, so you might want to add a little bit more glue here or some CA, something like that, where once in a while I'll check it, otherwise it'll fly out and uh, then you could get caught in the props and that wire could get cut or whatever. I think it's actually on a, it's on a little plug right there. It's not soldered on, so that could also pop off as well. But yeah, you can reprogram this. You could have different colors for different pilots, for example. So you probably will see some videos at some point in, in the future where people are chasing each other's trash cans, chasing each other with different colors, and that we can keep track of the pilots uh, with these LEDs in the back. Very nice touch. Okay, and then back on the batteries again. Uh, these are different batteries. You get four of these. Uh, one has 300 milliamp hours. They're 40 to 80 C batteries. So they're a little bigger and heavier than the ones on the uh, Mobula 7. And uh, yeah, you only get two sets like you do on the Mobula 7 as well. You also get a nice uh, zipper case that the uh, trash can comes in. Um, and also a small little USB charger and a screwdriver. Uh, pretty basic stuff. And also an instruction sheet with how, the, uh, how it's uh, set up in Betaflight if you want to modify this. But I didn't make any changes to any of the settings. I just uh, bound up the receiver. Um, Speaking of which, uh, this is the FreeSky version. Uh, you can bind up the receiver using the bind button, which is kind of hard to get to. I recommend, since this is the SPI receiver, you just use the CLI command. I think it's called uh, FreeSky underscore bind in the um, CLI. Actually, that might have been for the older version. So this is, I think they're running 4.0 in here. So in that case, you just want to put in the command bind for this one, and that will send the receiver into bind mode, and then you can go to your transmitter and bind it. That, that, that's way easier than, um, trying to do it via the bind button. So I recommend that. And let me just take the batteries out here. Uh, I know that some people are having, I think Kebab FPV was having some issues with fail safes. I think that's an issue with the crazy boards in general, uh, which by the way, this is an F4, another positive over the Mobula 7. Uh, that was an F3, this is an F4. So uh, F was, I think it was running 8K, 2K in here, which I just ran out of the box. You could probably change it to 8K, 8K and get a little better performance. But back to the receiver antenna, you can see I have it right here. Normally it just kind of is sitting out here like on the side, kind of flopping out and, and maybe even curled up. You want this antenna to be straight. So what I did was I ran it under this little strut here and under the motor wire, you can see right there, and between the uh, the duct and the motor plug. So it's, it's pretty straight right here. And I didn't have any fail-safe issues, although I wasn't really flying too far away, but I was flying in a parking garage where there's a lot of concrete and stuff, and I didn't have any fail-safes. And I was running in the default D16 mode. So I heard that uh, for the fail-safe bug or whatever that this, this board has, or at least that three version, you could switch to D8 mode um, and then rebind, and that supposedly fixes it. But whenever I have my antenna like this, I don't usually have any problems. Uh, and my, I have a Mobile 7 here, which I haven't done that. You can see it just sticks out like this. And that's probably not recommended. So, yeah, just tuck your antenna away in there like that, and that's usually has pretty good reception for me, and it's not gonna get caught in the props when it's like that, so. That's uh, a little tip there for you guys on how to uh, configure or set up your antenna for best range, just do that. Okay, so let me uh, show you the weight differences here. Uh, 33.85, just for the trash can by itself, no batteries, and then we'll take the Mobula 7 here, and take the battery adapter out. This is the Mobula 7 by itself, no, no batteries, so 26.8, so significantly lighter for the Mobula 7, so 26.8, almost 27, and we're almost 30, yeah, almost 34, so it's uh, oh, 6 gram Difference there. Let me see if my math is right now. Well, 26.8, almost 27 versus almost 34. So oh, let's see, that's three. Yeah, so it's almost almost a seven gram difference actually. Yeah, so my math was a little bit off. And you can feel it. I mean, if you just have this, hold this in your hand, the trash can does weigh a lot more. So the question is, well, do you really get a benefit from the bigger motors? To overcome that extra, you know, the, you're, you're using a heavier motor to push more weight around. Is that a benefit over the lighter setup? Um, it's debatable. I'm still not 
totally 100% convinced either way. You know, sometimes it's it's better to have something that's heavier in with bigger motors and more power. Yeah, I think this, this is going to be a debate that's going to go around for a while now. And then let's put this on here with the batteries and the little battery adapter. Now we're at a little over 50 grams for the trash can. And then we'll put on the setup for the Mobius 7 with the smaller 250 milliamp hour batteries. So with the batteries, it's coming at 40, a little over 41 grams. So that's a pretty big difference. 41 grams versus almost 51 grams. So well, that's about nine, nine gram difference. <laughs> yeah, it's almost a nine gram difference. Let me just double check that. A little over 50 grams and a little over 41 grams. So yeah, it's a nine gram difference in the overall. So I guess you call that the all the weight or the AUW. That's what a lot of people uh, use out there between these two setups. Nine grams is not nothing, I and mean, that's a pretty big difference, especially for a little 2S setup using small batteries like this. So, you know, when you're actually flying it around and you're trying to figure out what's the difference between these two, yeah, you got bigger power for motors, but you're also throwing around more weight. So it's not like, um, it's not a clear cut decision which one you should absolutely, oh, this is absolutely the winner, or this is absolutely the winner. It's you know, it, it kind of depends on how you like to fly, if you prefer something a little lighter. Obviously, with more mass here, if you hit something really hard, it's going to cause more damage. It could, obviously, I think that with this mass here, the 9 grams, not sure how much of a difference it'll make in terms of hurting someone, in terms of the pain it might cause. If you hit someone in the face with one of these, I'm sure the person that gets hit would prefer to hit be hit by something that's lighter like this versus that. But, you know, why would you be flying it in someone's face? I don't know. It's just just sort of throwing out a, an odd example out there of why you would want something perhaps lighter versus heavier. Um, yeah, I'm not 100% convinced that having the bigger motor is necessarily totally beneficial over the Mobile 7. Now, I don't have, this is the version 1 frame, by the way. I don't have the version 2 or the version 3 frame, so we'll have to see what the weight differences are like. But this is, this is the question that everyone is going to be asking in the comments. Trash can or Mobile 7? Which one? Which one? Honestly, go and watch my videos on the Mobius 7. Watch the videos on this one and see how this flies. And you tell me if you can tell the difference. Because when I'm flying them around, and I was flying them back to back in some instances, um, yeah, it did feel a little bit, a little, little bit more power, obviously with a bigger motor on the trash can, but you're throwing around more weight. Uh, you know, the flight feels just a slight bit different. It doesn't feel like it's that much faster, so. So I'm going to say about that. Now, another question I'm going to have is, well, what about trash can or the Tiny Hawk? Well, I did a video on the, tra uh, the, the Tiny Hawk versus the Mobile 7, so I'll link that in the corner here. You guys can go watch that video where I talk about the difference between 2S and 1S and all that, blah, blah, blah. All of the things that I talked about in that video will also apply to the trash can because the Mobile 7 and the trash can are so similar. So, you know, go and watch the other video if you want to know if you should buy the trash can or the a tiny Hawk. Um, it's really going to be, you know, do you want to get the 1S Tiny Hawk or the 2S Trash Can or Mobula 7? That's really the debate you, you uh, want to be talking about. So, you know, bigger motors, bigger video transmitter, better camera, debatable. Um, you know, the EOS 2 is, is definitely better, but this 16.9 versus 4.3 and the field of view is going to be different. So, yeah, you may not like that. Maybe if they switch that to 4.3 later, you might like that better. I don't know. I think it's all you know, semantics here, you know, there's obviously on paper, you know, what they did is they took all the things that people liked about the Mobile 7 and they said, okay, we're going to make a better frame, we're going to bump up the motor a little bit, we're going to bump up the power on the video transmitter a little bit, and put in a little bit better camera, and then sort of, you know, modified the design. It's all largely based on the Mobile 7. Yes, so all on paper, everything is an improvement, but it is heavier. So, yeah, more power for motors, but it is heavier. I know I'm, I'm beating a dead horse here. But that's really what it comes down to, and I can't really tell that much of a difference between these two. So, I'll leave it at that. You guys can decide for yourself. I'm sorry I can't give you a definitive answer that this one is better than this one, or vice versa. It's just, that's just my honest opinion based on how I flew it, and the way I fly. Obviously, other reviewers will have a different opinion on that. Who knows? Um, I can just only go based on what I feel and give you my honest opinion, so. Honestly, between these two, you really can't go wrong. 
unless you really need the bigger motors and the bigger video transmitter and you want the EOS camera. Um, the frame will eventually will be the same as this one, so that's kind of a moot point in my opinion. And the frames will always break eventually, so you're going to be ending up replacing them anyway. So that's my opinion on that. Anyway, go ahead and show you some flight footage of the trash can. You guys can decide for yourself which one you think is better, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.